I'm back. I don't know what I'm trying to achieve, but I felt like I needed to have a little bit of a, an, what's the word? Unburden. Maybe unburden is the right word. So it's been my 40th. It's been the wedding. It's been lots of change, lots of things happening. And I thought this might be an ideal way to catch up. I've got my uh, mug that my son bought me for my birthday. It says Mama Bear. It says it on both sides, actually. I was just about to turn it around, but I didn't realise it was on both sides. Bear with, let me know how I swig. Right, so, the wedding. I feel like I need to do a video just on the wedding, uh, which I will do separate. But this video was kind of about the fact that I've turned 40. The fact that I have been in a real bad spiral. Um, I've kind of been in a bit of a bubble of I don't know who I am anymore I don't know um, what I need to be doing I don't know how I'm a mum I, I didn't know who I was I just I still feel like I'm still finding out what I'm going to be doing and where I'm going with myself but um, I was in a really bad place and I it was very similar to when I was 30 and on my 30th birthday I spent the whole day crying I mean it could have been the ex-husband however um, I think it was a lot to do with the age and getting older but getting older also comes with that like bittersweetness of the fact that actually it's a privilege um, and it's a gift that not many people have obviously you know uh, if you followed me long enough that I have lost two of my best friends um, and I don't think 40 is very old um, and to lose them before they're like 45, 46 is just it's wrong you, you're not meant to, that's too young to go it's too young isn't it to be to not be here so for me turning 40 was like I, w I had my own selfishness of being really sad and feeling really old and not really knowing who I am and being a mum and that's all I've been for the last 17 years um, and I really struggled um, and with my struggle with my struggle came um, because I was miserable I was then eating shit because I was eating shit it made me feel worse and I just got into this awful cycle and I was miserable and I was not wanting to get up and I was not wanting to have a shower and I was not wanting to wash my hair and and like I was just got myself in this like little cycle and I knew I was feeling miserable and I knew I was being snappy to everybody but I just couldn't help myself and I'm apologizing to everybody and I'm saying I'm sorry I'm being like this and I wish I could just snap out of it but you for those of you that know you can't just snap out of it even if you're self-aware even if you're you're completely aware that you are being that person and that person is a horrible, horrible, like, hollow of yourself. You can't, you can't, you can't help it until you get through the other side. I feel like I am getting through to the other side. Um, I'm very, very lucky that I have a good set of friends. Um, if I didn't have those friends, I think I probably would have been in a little bit of a deep hole for longer. Um, after you get married no one explains to you about the wedding blues and the whole anticlimacticness of the day has been and it's done and then you go on honeymoon and it's all lovely and amazing and then that's it something that you've been taking over a year to plan is suddenly done finished and there's no more planning and there's no more there's no more look forward to and i am very much a person that needs to know my next goal so that was why i was very much like I knew I was going to be that person. I've known myself long enough to know that after the wedding, even though I didn't really realise to the extent of how bad it was going to be, I, I knew I needed something else to plan, which is why I wanted to plan a big 40th, because I also knew I was going to struggle being 40, and I thought that if I planned a big party and if I pa planned a great big thing about it, it would make me enjoy it more and it would make me feel better about it. So after the wedding, after the honeymoon, we got back. I was still on a high for quite some time, printing off the photos, um, all that sort of stuff. And then I just, I just dropped. Then my party. So I started like planning. I started having to organise what I was doing, decorations, um, the children's outfits, my outfit. Like I had more stuff to plan. Then, then after that, I didn't have anything to plan. There wasn't anything and um, I kind of, I kind of just, 
I, I crashed, I burned. Um, there's a great big debate, well it's not really a great big debate at all, many of my followers believe that I have ADHD. Um, it's not something I've ever delved into, it's not something that I... I, pr I probably I have lots of traits that I feel like when the things come up on different social media platforms and oh do you do this do you do that I do all the things I, I know I do all those things and I'm quite erratic and I will start a project and I have to get it done I'm quite spontaneous I, I do think there probably is a lot of traits around it however for myself I don't feel like I need that label and unless me having a label is going to completely change my world I don't feel like I need to, to delve into that too deep. But the reason I'm touching on that briefly is that from that, everyone was saying that what I was experiencing was almost like a burnout. And that kind of makes some sort of sense to me as to why I was feeling that way. Um, I really struggle to talk into a camera. So I really am sorry if I'm a bit like, looking here and I, str I struggle I feel like I'm just looking at this lens and I think oh my god I better look really stupid um I don't even know where I was at then bear with burnout so I was at a burnout and um I feel like I'm just starting to come around the other side there's also been some stuff going on um with my work life as you know this is my full-time job content creator I hate saying influencer Ooh, cringe ick gives me the ick um, I say content creator, I don't know if that sounds much birch, but I feel like it sounds better to me. Um, so I do do content creating, it became my full time job, it wasn't something that I aspired to be, it wasn't something that I had pursued and thought that is what I'm going to do, it, it's just naturally happened. Um, and I'm really incredibly lucky and I'm really really grateful that I'm in the position that I'm in and that I can earn like a normal person's wage each month and do that from home and be around for my children and be around for Nicole specifically because of her additional needs. Um, so with my work life, there is lots of different elements to it. And I don't think, I think, I think a lot of us are scared to discuss it too much because unfortunately jealousy is, is the root of all evil. And I feel like when people see you at your lowest and when you're striving, people are there rooting for the underdog. Yeah, oh my God, you're amazing. Look at you smash it. Like we became viral because of a video of trolls on a live with me and Nicole, absolutely grilling her and being vile. That was our first viral video. Since then, obviously we've had quite a few, but that was what made us get seen. And when you then get to a position where now life is manageable, life is tolerable, things are kind of all in place, that's when people turn on you. That is when people that have followed you when you were low feel better because they can relate to you. They feel better about themselves because they think, ah, oh, look at her, look at all the shit she has to deal with. And now I'm in a position where, yeah, we still have to deal with the shit and I don't share as much of Nicole's tick attacks. I don't share, well, I never really did share a tick attacks because um, obviously when we started this, Nicole was 13, she's now 17 and her sharing her tick attacks makes her very vulnerable. Um, and uh, my content has probably changed over time because I've changed, my family life has changed, my situation has changed and things evolve. And I still very much am very much grounded and I'm still very much doing the things that I've always done and sharing awareness about Tourette's and sharing videos of Nicole and just being funny. But we're not the type of people that create content around her ticking. Like if she's ticking, we don't go, oh my God, let's get a camera and get you to do like brushing your teeth and show everyone. Like uh, our stuff that we share is literally what's happening in the now and it's not, um, like if we're in the car and Nicole's really ticky and we think, oh yeah, shall we film because this is a bit of ants? Um, or we're at home, like I did a video the other day and I was sat in here and Nicole's ticks were funny and she didn't want to be on camera because she had like t-shirt and short shorts on because she was in her PJs um, and Callum hates being on camera anyway and they were like sat together on the sofa and I was sat over there. Um, but it was still funny, you could still hear her ticks and so um, I started filming me so you could hear the ticks happening. My point is, 
I feel like now social media has been around, it has, you're starting to see people's true colours and equally you're starting to see your followers' true colours. And lately I have had, we go through waves, but I have had like an abundance of horrible, vile, nasty comments lately. Like genuinely shitty comments. And unfortunately, it came at a time when, like I'm talking about my 40th, like I'm talking about myself, like I'm talking about my general life, it came at a time when I was struggling internally already. So then to have like people knock you lower, my self-confidence went from here to like rock bottom and you've got people that are my closest friends and, and obviously my loved ones saying you're being ridiculous like look at where you are like look at what you've achieved and you you know you're smashing it and don't don't feel like that don't let other make people make you feel like that but unfortunately it does make you feel rotten and it does make you feel shitty um and really when you look at the the reason that they're treating you like that is because you're not at rock bottom anymore but then you become feeling like rock bottom because of your treatment and i feel like the more people thrive and the more people succeed that's when you get a higher level of trolls and more people being like fuck you you do this you do that like who do you think you are blah 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 blah, blah. Um, and I'll be honest, I I haven't loved myself for a very, very long time and um, I haven't loved my body, I haven't loved my mind, I haven't, I haven't loved myself. And turning 40, I fucking struggled with, but I'm so grateful that in the last few years I made the effort to sort out how I felt about myself with my, with my appearance because that wasn't about anybody else. There are plus size people out there, and I've said this a million times, if I had looked like them with the flat stomach and the nice curvy shape, wonderful. I just looked like a fucking hippo. And me having a gastric sleeve, me, me sorting out my skin, me um, sorting out my chest, sorting out the loose skin after my gastric sleeve, doing all those things on my outside has massively healed myself on the inside because now I feel how my brain feels. I don't know if that makes any sense. So because I look at myself in the mirror and I don't hate myself when I look at myself, it's now making my mental health better because I, I've started to love myself. And then I actually had, it was the bizarrest thing. So I had a day where I was like, you look good, Jodie. Like, why can't we look at ourselves in the mirror and think to ourselves, yeah, you fucking smashing it today, look at you, yeah, I do love myself. Check my hair out, my hair went good, my makeup went on point, like my clothes look amazing, I feel amazing. And you look at yourself in the mirror and you take that selfie, right? <laughs> and then I open my phone and someone's like, you love yourself. I'm so, like, I'm sorry, make it make sense. Yes, I actually have started to love myself. And unfortunately, I feel like you making that comment is because you don't love yourself and you've got nobody else who loves you. And that actually makes me feel quite sad and sorry for them because even with my birthday shit, even with my hormonal 40s, all that sort of stuff, and again, I will do another separate video on all of those things because Davina has become my new pad. Um, I, I have started to love myself and I don't actually know what's wrong with that. I'm not arrogant. I'm not rude. I'm a nice person. I'm loyal. I'm a good friend. I have a good heart. I will give to anybody if I can give. Um, so if I love myself, why does that make me a bad person? Like, I don't. I don't understand people and I don't understand the trolls. Yes, I'm lucky. Yes, I know I'm lucky with this job and I'm very happy with where I am right now. And yeah, this could change in another 12 months. In 12 months time, you may never get another podcast from me because I don't know, things have gone and I'm not doing it anymore. I don't know, th th things change, people change and I'm just going with the flow and I don't think that's a bad thing and I feel like 
so many people get criticised. Like, if you had a load of friends on your Facebook and one of them posted that they had got a new car, for example, I haven't got a new car, FYI. The point is, if you see someone posting, oh my God, I've got a new car. Do you like that comment? Or are you the person that's like, fucking cunt, who are they? Um, like flaunt it all on, on Facebook or flaunting it all over socials or whatever. Because there's a big difference between a jealousy and uh, supporting other people. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I see someone, one of my friends be like, oh my God, look, I've just bought this new car. I'm like, oh, that's sick. Fair play, looks amazing. Hope you love it. Why can't people be like that? Why is nobody happy for other people? Why? I feel like nobody, nobody wants other people to be happy because they've got struggles in their own life. And I could talk, and I probably am talking way too much um, about this right now, but unless you're happy, you seem to be a cunt to other people that are happy. And unfortunately, then it gets in a vicious cycle because then people feel like they can't share things. People feel like, someone else made a comment the other day um, about my house. Bearing in mind, um, I, I do live in, a, in, in social housing. I, I am in a council house. That's a whole other story. If you wanna go back a few podcasts, there's like one of me, I was homeless. And someone argued that as well. You weren't ever homeless. All right, righto. Okay, if you say so. So, someone, going back to the house comment, so someone commented on my house like, it's really nice to see, because I have got a lot of followers, it's really nice to see someone in a normal house. I, I, I'm not saying I want a big house, I mean this house is pretty big, but what I'm saying is, if I had saved enough to have a deposit, my goal, the only reason I will leave this house, if I've saved enough, that we can afford to live in a house that's got a bit of land. It's been my dream since I was in my 20s because I've always been grown up with horses. I worked with horses, yada, yada, yada. I want a house, not massive, with a bit of land so I can have horses, right? What if I achieve that? What if I work my ass off, I save like you wouldn't believe, and I get there? Am I then gonna be in a position where I feel like I can't share that with people? I can't show that with people because people would perceive me differently and people will be like, who the fuck does she think she is? Like, at, w at what point are things okay? I do want a new car, actually. Like, that car is the bane of my life. I wanna clear my finance and I wanna fuck that car off. I fucking hate that car. Um, so if I get a new car and I'm like really chuffed with it, am I allowed to share that? Or is that then gonna be more ammunition for people to be like, oh, she thinks she's so good now, look at her. She loves herself, look at her with a new car. Oh my God, can't believe she's flaunting that. Like what am I allowed to do? Because I actually genuinely miss the days when I had less followers. I've, this is why, a little bit why I've come back to YouTube, because I feel like it's more of a, a community vibe and I feel like it's more of an intimate setting for myself. And I feel safer here now than I do on TikTok. Instagram, not so much. Everyone's a, a bit better on Instagram. There's not so many opinions. Um, I don't feel so under, like, so under attack. TikTok, I really do. And I don't, I don't understand, I don't understand the differences. I've probably gone on long enough. I would love for you to subscribe, like my page, like this, comment on this video, tell me any experiences that you've had. Um, I'm also thinking about trying to get guest people to speak, even if it's on Zoom ones, because obviously I am a normal person in a normal home. I don't have any sort of fancy studio. Um, so, I mean, I would quite happily have people come to my social group. Please like, please subscribe the ding ding bell let's see if we can get to like uh, my aim for christmas is to have twenty-five thousand subscribers on my youtube so that is my aim um i would love for that to happen if it does we'll look at trying to do some sort of giveaway uh but for now this is me I had a little bit of a ranty one back uh hopefully i didn't bore the shit out of you uh apologies for swearing and um yeah keep being you guys fuck all the haters